Good afternoon, good morning, good evening to uh, you. Welcome you all. We welcome you all to the pulpit discussion. And uh, very, we have our dear uh, panels on the on on this discussion that I'm going to introduce uh, very very well. Um, uh, <laughs> first, we'll start with our, our guest. It's always good since uh, we have our guest. Uh, he's one. He's a member of the executive of of the pulpit discussion. And so he's also the presiding for the Central Church um, Local Assembly in Hawaii, uh, military base district. Uh, he's in the presence of uh, presiding Eugene. Welcome, please. Thank you. I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And also, uh, for many of you that do not know about this, um it's always good to celebrate amen we we are blessed that when god promotes i put on my status when god promotes no one can argue you can't argue you must celebrate amen and and i know that he may not like this he may not like this but uh without further ado uh our dear pastor berma aj is no longer a captain amen uh he's now a major in the United States Army, amen. Uh, so please, uh, when you, when in the secular world, wherever, whichever setting you find him, you may address him in any of these titles, amen. So we have major and we have doctor, and then we have mister, and then we have pastor, Berma Ejay. Pastor, you're welcome. Thank you, Presiding. I think pastor is more than enough. Yeah, so uh, I'm grateful to God. God has been good. And to him alone, be all the praise, be all the glory. We are indeed nothing without him. Amen. And I always say I owe it all to Jesus. But thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, our dear Major. As some of our audience have already said from Elder Joshua, we are giving you a 21-gun salute. I think most of, most of our audience don't understand the military culture, but stuff like this, you can also give 21-gun salutes or salutes, you know, however you hear the gunshots going up while the COP and the angelic beings, we are celebrating this promotion. So we say that God richly Recently bless our dear pastor for this promotion. And we all tap into it. Pastor, are we, do we do that? We tap into that promotion. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, thank you once again to the pulpit discussion. As many of us know, this month, the month of October, have uh, we have dedicated it to the talking about the unique women in the Bible. Um, we've talked about Joker bed. Uh, we've talked about Hannah. Today's focus is going to be on Esther. On Esther. Uh, Esther is going to be our today's uh, unique women um, or woman that we will in the Bible that we will be discussing. Please, as tradition goes, if you have any questions, any comments, uh, please leave it in a in a in a comment section, and we'll be able to address them accordingly accordingly so god richly bless you for joining us uh please do share this on your various platforms so that others could be blessed uh, by watching this live feed and i know that our lives and anyone that watched this video or this live feed uh, will be blessed amen amen so once again uh unique women in the bible and today's focus is on Esther, Esther. So I'll quickly go into it and uh, yield the platform to our dear guest uh, to give us any opening remark, brother, uh, presiding Eugene, brother Eugene, uh, to, to, to give us any, anything that you, you, you deduce from, from this uh, uh, uniqueness of, of Esther. And then we'll yield to our, our, our pastor, please. Thank you, Elder Aluti. So, um... Before even going to this, uh, I have also been, I've really, I've studied about Esther a couple of times, the book of Esther, and uh, I mean, mostly when we study about it, we look at the love story and the romance, and 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 I've, I've always seen it under that uh, assumption, but preparing for this, I, I kind of took it on a, on a kind of a different scale, looking at, I was talking about women, um, uh, unique women in the Bible, so I, I kind of looked at it from that aspect, and I saw... Um, that uh, 
it was not just only about the love story and the romance, but Esther was carried a lot of weight on, on her. Uh, she, she, she was a young lady and, 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 and the survivor of a nation pretty much depended on her. You know, the survivor of God's people depended on her. And uh, I, 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 I happen to see how uh, as a simple young lady as uh, she was, uh, she took it upon herself to put her life on the line, you know, to put her life on the line um, um, for uh, the, the for the Jewish nation, and and just that, uh, I it, it kind of dawned on me how God can use uh, simple people. God can use anybody uh, for uh, his his will and for his purpose. So uh, this is my opening remarks. Uh, thank you, Elder Alote. Wow, wonderful, wonderful. As he said, it was something that uh, Esther had carried on a lot of weight. Uh, as a young lady in finding herself. So we'll look into it. Uh, so after we take our opening remarks from our dear uh, pastor, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Elder Lute, and thank you, uh, Presiding Eugene. I, I believe as uh, Presiding Eugene said that uh, if going through this series, if going through these stories, if anybody has a doubt about what God can do through women, then there is a big problem. So I believe that uh, we are discussing this to let every lady know that there is a queen in you. So an ordinary lady, an ordinary girl growing up and becoming a queen is the doing of God. In our days and in our times, we see royalty as, as by birth. If you are born into a royal family, then you are royalty. But God wants to use this story uh, to let all of us know, including every lady listening to us, that there is a queen in you, that if you allow God to work the process, you, you mount your place like Esther. And also Esther represents all the ladies who will come to positions of authority. What is God's expectation? What does God demand of ladies who will rise to position of power? So I'm excited for this discussion. And I believe that we will re-emphasize the uniqueness. And if you go back, Jochebed, just by giving birth to Moses and taking care of Moses, made her unique. You come to Hannah, who by her luck and what she did not have became unique. Then we come into Esther, who became unique because she became a queen. In every phase of your life, in every moment of your life, there is, there is a grace to be unique. And I believe God will teach us and God will show us as we go through and study about Esther. Mm. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think that I think the first thing of her uniqueness of, of was the journey of her becoming a queen. But before we even get to that, queen um as as we've always done we've tried to understand who that individual is because the goal is to try to understand how god's purpose how god's intent uh, made her so unique and stand out um so we we will we, from esther um based on some research um just to understand who she is and also where she's coming from. The book of Esther was introduced as a book that never mentioned the name of God. Um, it never mentioned the name of God. Um, and Esther was someone who um, parents died. You know, so as a young lady, uh, her parents died. Uh, so I want to bring this to our dear pastor um, in, in, appli in application to our generation now, where maybe a young lady, a single lady, you know, trying to put Esther in a context and how we can relate to Esther uh, in this time. I hope, um, any comments on that, please? That, that is a great question. And I believe that uh, one of the things that I've heard, especially in this society, uh, the American society, and to some degree, mm -hmm. people who have been educated, people who have had other experiences, we tend to to point out what or predictions of things that will make people not succeed in life. So a good example, as you rightly said, Esther is an orphan. So right away, people will look at her as 
she is, she, she is disadvantaged in life. It will come across that who will be a help. Her, her, her parents died. And two, she is in exile. It's not like she's even in a home of, of comfort, a place where she can relate. And the only person she has is the cousin. Mm -hmm. The only relative willing to look at her is, is a man who is also in exile. So I believe that the lesson to all of us is that it's easy to count on our disadvantages. It is easy to see why you will not do well. It is easy to look at people why they will not uh, excel in life. It's easy to look at people and think that I can predict the outcome. It's not going to be good. But Esther stands out to let us know that the God factor still works. The God factor can, can make up for what we lack. And number two, God will always bring people our way. God will always bring people your way. I always say that God is just, God is fair. God is just and God is fair. That is why the wisest man that ever lived said that he, has, he, he looked under the sun. Mm -hmm. And the race is not to the swift, mm -hmm. nor bread to men of understanding. No victory to men of strength, but time and chance happens to them all. Mm -hmm. I want to tell everybody listening to me, God will give you your chance and God will give you your time. Mm -hmm. And if you follow the story of Esther, you will realize that if you don't take your time and you don't take your chance, the disadvantage you see in life will be real. Mm -hmm. But if you take these things, it does not matter the disadvantage you have. It may be a language limitation. It may be educational limitation. It may be financial limitation. It may be experience limitation. It may be even be family limitation. You have no one to help you. But remember, God will give you your time and God will give you your chance, just like he did for Esther. Wow. Thank you so much uh, for that uh, time and chance for Esther. And... Um, like you said, um, is it, we look at our disadvantage instead of looking at, like you said, God will always bring someone to help us out. And presiding Eugene, if you can, do you have any comments or any addition to that, that maybe anything that stood out to you? I mean, our uh, pastor said uh, most of the, uh, the, the part, but the, the only thing uh, that I want to also touch on, as pastor said, that it is dangerous. It is really dangerous for, for, for people or for us to, to kind of, uh, depict or to kind of uh, um, assume what somebody is going to turn into by looking at their present, uh, their present condition. And as Pastor laid out for us, uh, Esther was in the, the condition that Esther was in. It was like a condition that there was pretty much no success. And I mean, Jewish people were hated, you know, under every uh, uh, circumstance. So they were already hated in the, in the empire, in the Persian empire. Uh, they found themselves in a place way away from home. So everything just laid out uh, in a way that uh, anybody would have looked at Esther would have said, oh, no, no, nothing good could come out from, uh, from this person. But uh, when we read the story, we see how even Esther kept herself, you know, in that environment, she could have just tried and be like any of the Persian women. She could have just tried and just, you know, um, and do whatever she wants, but you know, they said that when we were even looking for virgins, she was counted one of them. So, even with that, that shows us that even in that uh, ungodly setting that she was in, she still maintained, uh, maintained um, uh, 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 the godliness. And, and, and sometimes this is something that stood out uh, in this is how, as Christians, sometimes we act in a non Christian uh, setting. So, uh, so thank you very much, Adalote. All right, thank you so much uh, for this. So I want, I want to ask these questions, right? So being raised by her own, cous uh, by her own cousin um, in, in a land of captivity. So I know um, many years ago, we did the eschatology, the first uh, uh, segment, it was introduced the Babylonian mindset. Um, King Nebuchadnezzar around that time, the culture around that time, um, what was going on. Um, but uh, her identity was never lost. Um, so I want us to, uh, if Pastor can throw light on this about identity 
uh, of Esther in the journey, even from the birth to her being captured. Because throughout the scriptures, you don't really, you, you when we read it, we catch the middle part of it where God comes to the rescue and all. But we want to look at, we want to look at, uh, um, um, you know, her, her not losing her identity, meaning that knowing that she said she, she was a Jew. Uh, if you can throw light on that, please. Thank you, Preside. And I believe that even that extends to, so we will see the role of Mordecai later in the story, mm -hmm. how he stood his ground mm -hmm. and did not copy the, the, the culture, the customs of the people. I believe that there is one, one challenge this generation has is that we've not gathered the courage to stand out as Christians. The Jewish people had that mindset. Many times you go through the airport and you see them all, the male young from baby to the rabbi wearing their cap and with their long beard and with a robe that we may not fancy, we may not like, but that is their identity. I pray to God that every lady hearing my voice today will realize that your identity is not from the society. Your identity is from God. It is, it is who you relate to eternally, God. And that was what Esther had, that she never lost that identity that, that I made you. I am a Jew. I may be queen, but I am a Jew. I may be. So look at her journey. I'm a slave. I'm a Jew. I'm in exile. I'm a Jew. I'm married to the king. I'm still a Jew. No situation changed her identity. Unfortunately, when, 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 we, when we don't have much, it's easy to call ourselves Christians. It's easy to say, praise the Lord. And as we progress, as as success comes our way, as influential people start relating to us, then we start adapting, we start changing. Even how we dress, even how we dress. So I pray that we will learn from Esther that society does not determine who you are. You are a Christian, you are a child of God, and it does not matter where you are, which city you live in, which country you live in, who you are, you are married to, who you are affiliated with, may that identity speak louder than whoever or whatever you become. Wow. Uh, thank you so much. And with that being said, this question goes to Brother Eugene. If, you know, when, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the, in the, uh, under the uh, domain of, of the Babylonians, you know, I think they try to change their name. They try to um, uh, change their diet and change their God, change their act of worship, you know, all these things. Um, and in, in light of that, uh, dealing with, uh, as Pastor mentioned earlier, dealing with a relationship with her, with her cousin, which is Mordecai, right? Uh, we want to also look at that relationship because sometimes um, we tend to hear stories about how maybe there could be a more treatment. Uh, there could be uh, a bad relationship between um, who is raising us up sometimes. But when we're reading the story of Esther and Mordecai and understanding their relationship, it's a bit different. So I want us to, I want you to throw some light on, 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 on that relationship with her cousin. Um, um, and if, if you can throw light on it, please. Uh, so thank you, uh, Presiding. So uh, I believe the first thing was Esther was a humble woman. She was she was very very humble. Uh, when we, when you see the story uh, how she grew up, I mean your cousin uh, raising you. Uh, when you read the story, you can see that whatever that Mordecai told Esther, she took it. She was respectful. So she 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 was respectful to her cousin because I mean sometimes cousins i mean you can say ah no <laughs> i mean uh you are not my dad you are not my mom but esther esther really uh took mordecai as the parent or as the father so that respect uh aspect of it was there she was also very humble as i said uh, in the beginning looking at it that uh, 
it didn't just happen when she was under Mordecai. She was taking advice when she was under Mordecai. She was taking advice when she was in the preparation to even meet the king. She was still taking advice. She was still taking advice from Mordecai when she became a queen. So it, 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 so it tells us uh, how she didn't change, you know, and, and, and she saw Mordecai as that godly figure in her life that, that impacted the wisdom that she needed to survive in that uh, hostile environment. Because let's look at it, they were in a very hostile environment where they found themselves, as I said from the beginning, the Jewish people were have been hated in all all aspects. So even in that setting, I mean, it was not a conducive atmosphere. They were really also very far from home. So um, uh, as, as Christians, we, we, we all need that godly figure in our life, somebody that we can seek godly counsel from, somebody that we can seek, uh, 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 we can seek good advice from, wisdom from. And, as, and, and from this story, we can see that Esther knew what the role of Mordecai in her life, and she went according to Thank you so much for citing. Okay. So, Pastor, um, this question, I, I don't want our audience, we don't want to assume that our audience know the, <laughs> what was happening. Um, uh, we don't want to assume that they know. So, if you can, please uh, give us like a context of what was happening, what was going on that now Esther begins to stand, stand up, please. Thank you very much. And, and I'm very happy about this question. And as I'm saying this, I'll retrace some of the points that uh, Presiding Yuji raised. And one of the things we have to realize as I'm doing this is that that is how God raises queens. So the story is a very interesting one. Uh, the Babylonians took the Jewish people, conquered kingdoms, and now there was a new king called Ahasuerus. And he had conquered all the way from India to Ethiopia. So basically, the whole of Europe, Middle East, to North um, Africa was his empire. Mm -hmm. And they all sent tribute to him. Mm -hmm. But his kingdom was situated in a city called Sushan, which is the capital. So that was the capital city. That was where the king was. And because this king was glorious in all the things he did, mm -hmm. every year for six months, 180 days, he would display his wealth. He would display his victories. And at the end, he would have parties for the whole, everybody in the city. Mm -hmm. And what they do is that you, you can drink, eat whatever you want at his court. So one day he was drunk as a king. That is why you should never drink. <laughs> Nothing good happens from alcohol. I, I hope we can really trade this. Nothing good happens after alcohol. Mm -hmm. So he's now drunk. And he declares that they should go and call the queen Vashti to come and just walk about and show her beauty to the men. So Vashti heard and said, like, ah, this, is, this is a drunk man. I'm not going to do it. But afterwards, the king was not that worried. But what happened was that his advisors, the seven princes came and were like, no, this is disrespectful. Women will not respect their husband because of what Vashti had done. Vashti can no longer be queen. So now Vashti is disposed, she's no longer the queen. And the queen, the king, when his anger settled, now missed uh, uh, Vashti. So they decided that we have to find a wife, a new queen. And interestingly, they decided that let, let them go through all the provinces, over 120 countries, mm -hmm. and bring every beautiful woman and a virgin to the king. And Esther was beautiful and was living in the capital city and she was brought in. I want to say this here, a lot of Christians who don't really get the context of scripture use this to indicate that a Christian lady can do beauty pageant because even Esther went and presented herself and was part of those who were competing to be queen mother. Esther did not take this decision out of her choice. She was forced into it because mm -hmm. The, the decree was that if they see a beautiful woman who can be a queen, they pick you and they take you. Mm -hmm. So more or less a conscript. So any Christian who is be under this illusion that because of this, and I think one church somewhere also did, they even did a beauty pageant in the church in the name of <laughs> replicating Esther's, Esther's, Esther's story. It is not true. 
I can say without any iota of doubt, if Esther had her way, there is no way she would do this. Mordecai would never let her do this. Why? Their identity would have prevented them from being part, because if the king does not pick you as the wife, you become a concubine. Mm -hmm. So there is no way, there is no way Mordecai, a godly man, Esther, a godly woman, would choose this pathway. She was forced into it. And I know there are situations, there are times believers are forced into situations not of our doing, but still you maintain your identity. So now Esther is part of this. And there are two figures here, besides Eugene talked about it. God, in preparing Esther to become the queen, mm -hmm. brought Mordecai first. Mm -hmm. Mordecai was the one who saw the potential in Esther, carried her along, helped her, kept her, fed her. And I want to tell all of us, anybody God is raising, God will bring you first Mordecai. Mm -hmm. Mordecai to identify the potential in you. Mm -hmm. And also, I want to throw this out to our feminists, uh, people who always only see women raising women. God used a man called Mordecai to raise Esther to become a, a, a material worthy to become a queen. Mm. Let us not force ourselves into this worldly mindset. Mm. You don't need a female pastor to raise godly women in the church. All you need is a pastor with the grace of Mordecai. Mm. That's why I said two weeks ago, God can use myself, Elder Alvote, presiding Eugene, to speak to women. Mm. We don't need to be women to speak to women. No. Yeah. We have the grace of Mordecai. We have the anointing of Mordecai. If Mordecai can raise Esther, God can use a man to raise a woman. Mm. Let us not copy from the world. Women, no, 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 no. We can have men as mentors to women because they see divine potential in them. Mm -hmm. So Mordecai was the first training process God brought Esther in making her a queen. And the interesting thing is that he took care of her by himself. All the expenditure and saw the care for her to the point that when Esther was forced into the training to become part of the women who were called, Mordecai will go daily to go check on her. Isn't it interesting? You go daily to, is it everything okay? Then number two, in the process of becoming the queen, when they, they brought all these people to the, to the king's palace, mm -hmm. they called another man called Hagar mm -hmm. to take care of the women. And his whole duty was to beautify them. And I, I, I know I'm on slippery grounds now, so I believe we are Christians. We have inner beauty. Mm. I believe that the Holy Spirit lives in us. Our character is paramount, is the main thing. That is why Peter advised that our beauty should not be outward, but should be the reflection of the inner man. So I agree. But if you want to be, if you want to be the queen, if you want to be the one in the forefront leading, you should have an understanding of beauty. You should have an understanding of how to carry yourself. Mm -hmm. we, we, you should have, you should know how to talk in the midst of people. You should know how to dress. And this was not automatic in the mind of Esther. Someone had to train her. Mm -hmm. And I believe that in our churches, there are role models. There are role models who dress and carry grace with it that we must learn from. I, 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 I say it all the time. God told Prophet Samuel, man looks on the outside. Man looks on the outward, but I, God, looks at the heart. So if you have a good heart and a bad dressing, I see your bad dressing. I am not God. I don't see your heart. The little I can see of your heart is how you act. Go to someone. You, and someone is a prophet, a super prophet. No prophecy of someone fell to the ground. And God told him, you are looking, you are a man, you're looking on the outer side. Mm -hmm. So to all the young ladies, to all the older ladies as well, 
Never, never buy into this wrong notion. Oh, just the character. Oh, just be a good character. No. If you're going to be a queen like Esther, your dressing matches. Your hairstyle matches. And if you don't know how to do it, that's not a problem. God will bring you a guy. He will show you how to do it. And he will teach you how to do it well. But the understanding we have is that our value is on the Christ who lives in us. But we don't neglect how we dress, how we appear, because man will always look on the outside. Wow. Thank you so much, Pastor, for giving us context to this. And uh, it's very much appreciated. And please, let's bear in mind, like we said, uh, Elder, Elder Joshua echoed, uh, we, don't need, we don't need to be women to speak to women. Um, if we have the spirit of Mordecai, we are able to do it. Our audience, we are, we recognize you all today. We have our dear uh, clergy serving Mama She watching all the way from Trinidad, and 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 he says she said God bless you. That's our national head's wife. Um, we also have our uh, sister Rejoice, sister Quinise watching, uh, welcoming, presiding on the pulpit. So glad to see you on here. More grace and hello to. You. To the panelists, um, we have our dear brother Eddie saying congratulations to our dear pastor, and may your path keeps keeps keep shining brighter and brighter with ever increasing uh, glory. Amen. Amen. To the rest, we say God richly bless you for joining us. If you have not shared this, please do so uh, to share this. Now, I want to uh, bring. Um, Later on, we'll bring the God factor in this, but this question is directed to uh, our dear brother Eugene. Uh, with Esther in a competition, even though she was first in there, um, how would you depict or describe her relationship with those that she's competing with? What, what could you say about, if you have anything stand out, out to you, what was her mindset in all this right there? Because sometimes, women tend to find themselves in certain situations. And if care is not given, they are either destroying each other, they are biting or they are helping each other. But we are learning from Esther with, in the midst of all this, if anything stood out. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Presiding. So one thing I would say about Esther was, if you read the story, we, we could see that she stood out. And she stood out not because she, uh, she, she went with the flow, not because she, she, she did what everybody was, was, uh, was, was doing. But one thing in which Pastor already said that she kept her identity um, of who she was uh, by what I said, by being respectful, by listening to godly counsel. But two, we could see that she listened to uh, her guy too. Because anytime that they were being prepared, they said you can ask for anything you want when you are going to the king. And most women will, you know, do ask for different, different things. But when Esther was going, she listened to the person who was training her, the person who had who had prepared her for that time. So, so I believe uh, Esther's relationship with the other competitors one was not. She wasn't just doing what they were all doing. Because if she was doing what they were all doing, she would have also done the same thing that most of them did. But she 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 saw a higher calling. She 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 listened to her. Uh, I, I see the I use the word a supervisor uh, too. Um, I believe Esther did not. Um, how how I put? So I believe Esther did not settle. Mm -hmm. So me me saying that uh, they did not settle is that she did not just give into anything. Mm -hmm. And as I said, she was unique. She understood mm -hmm. her where she was coming from. So she was unique, meaning that she, she took what she was doing serious and, and, and she did it to the best of her ability. Thank you, Presiding. All right, thank you so much uh, for that being said. So basically she knew who she was. Uh, uh, she, she wasn't settling for, for, for mediocrity or mediocrity. Yeah. Um, Pastor, do you have anything to add to that? I think the Bible was, as, as uh, Eugene said, so the Bible was really silent on, on interaction with the other women. Mm -hmm. But I believe that, as he said, you can clearly see that she, she just listened to whoever, the guy who was the custodian who was advising, mm -hmm. and so that, I guess, more or less, 
I'm just going as I am, as I've, I've been prepared, and I leave the rest in the hands of God. Mm-hmm. But we will see more of her attitude at the end, how she dealt with Haman. So I believe that in the whether we like it or not, like Esther will be like any woman, like Esther, and like any man, you'll be thrown in situations where you're not just by yourself, you're other people seeking for the same thing you want. You have other people doing the same thing that you're doing. But one of the things we should have is that look at your purpose, look at your flow, and let us not be so minded of what others have. Let us not be so minded of what others brought to to the game, but rather, what have I been trained to do? And just focus on that. So that is a great lesson we can learn from Esther, that what have I been trained to do? Let me focus on that and not worry myself with, oh, this person is doing this. This person has done this. And the interesting thing is that, remember, virgins have been brought from 120 countries. So even if each country brought one virgin, that that is 120 women. (laughs) <laughs> and others have gone ahead of Esther. So that the, the painful thing is you want to go and find out from them and try, but she just followed in her humility, in her understanding that what will I have I been trained to do? Let me just focus on that and not compare myself to other people. And that's I believe that is a great lesson. Paul said that for those who compare themselves one to another, they are not wise. Mm. It is not wisdom to compare yourself to people. Wow, thank you so much, Pastor, for that. And so now we want to, I know uh, we talk about Haman will eventually come in. Uh, We want to bring the the God behind the story uh, about, because this whole uniqueness was to fulfill God's purpose. And history will tell you that the Israelites or the Jews um, uh, always, some way or the other are always in captivity. (laughs) They are always in captivity, whether it is out of sin, out of disobedient, out of something they did not do. For this reason, the the God was not with them. And, And I believe one of these reasons was why they were in captivity. But God, through Moses, as always, through the past, has always said that, hey, I will always be with you. Even though you are under captivity, I'm always going to be with you. He used Moses to deliver the Israelites uh, in the days of Daniel. He used Daniel and all this. But in the days in as this, as in the Esther days, I'll say Esther days, um, you realize that Esther was one figure that um, God, you could see that, act of God, the protection of God um, through the things that she asked, she required trusting and having faith that the Lord who had delivered them before can deliver them now. So with this, I would like to ask our dear pastor, with Haman, with Mordecai, with Esther and the workings, and it's this, I'll say the hand of God or the protection of God coming to light through just the mindset, through the identity, through humility, the hand of God was seen in the midst of all this. Um, If you can throw more light on, on on the hand of God or the deliverance of God for the Jewish. Thank you. So, so thank you very much. So I'll just backtrack and because I know we'll be talking about the victory, but Esther made two mistakes that I just want to highlight, then I'll, I'll go to your question. And the reason why I'm highlighting that is, I know she's a character study, but there are two things that as I was going over, I realized that she made these two cardinal mistakes, which is common in our days too. Mm. One, when she became the queen, she forgot about Mordecai. Oh. She's the queen and never, it never occurred to her to help Mordecai in any way. And I believe that was a mistake. The man who raised her, Mm. the man who took care of her, now she's a queen in the palace, and Mordecai does not matter. Mordecai was still sitting at the gate. Mm. And I believe it's a lesson to us. Even though God honored Mordecai, I believe it was God placed Esther, first of all, to honor Mordecai. Mm. And I want to encourage all of us, may we never forget 
May we never forget the Sunday schools, the Sunday school teachers. May we never forget the pastors God brought our way. May we never forget the uncles who pay school fees for us. May we never forget the strangers who came into our life to hold our hands. Don't be like Esther. And I believe in our days, a lot of us pride and brag as if we are self-made people. In the economy of God, there is no self-made man. God will always raise man by man. God will always raise you with another man's hand. So when we get where God is blessing us, may we not forget and be like Esther, sitting in the palace, and Mordecai is still a gate man, a gate and it's not like an official position. He goes to sit at the gate. Mm. Esther forgot. And number two, even though Esther remembered and knew her identity, when trouble was now pronounced on the Jewish people, she did not care. Mm. And I, I can see her. It's like a decree has gone out that Jewish people are going to be killed. Anyway, nobody knows I'm a Jew. I'm in the palace, who can come and harm me? But it took Mordecai, the same Mordecai to send a message to Esther. And when they told, they told Esther that Mordecai has been working, wearing sack, sack clothes, dirty clothes, she brought him clothes. I'm like, are you so naive? <laughs> it's like, is it because you don't have enough clothes? You are not so, you're not that in touch with your uncle, the one who raised you that, you don't even know his state of heart and mind. And I want to encourage someone. It is time for us to remember all the Sunday school teachers, all the pastors who've taken time to raise you to be where you are. Don't forget. Mm. But it took Mordecai. So now to your question, the hand of God. Mm. Many times, a lot of us are waiting for God to appear in the vision to tell you, my son, go do this. Mm -hmm. A lot of us are waiting for direct prophecies. But one major way God speaks and directs our path is through the burning desire he puts in us. When this decree went out, everybody was maybe thinking about their own thing. Mm -hmm. But Mordecai had a desire that, no, there will be deliverance. And that deliverance is going to come through Esther, the same Esther. Mm -hmm. So God works through us. Mm -hmm. There may be a situation in your church. There may be a situation in your family. There may be even a situation in the nation and you may be like, who cares? Who am I? How can I affect America? I'm living in Hawaii. Uh, I'm far away from Washington, D.C. But I tell you, when God puts that desire in your heart, you may be the Mordecai at the gate, but unknown to you, God has connected you to the Esther's. And once you start working on that desire, once you take steps towards that desire, you will see manifestation. I know we'll go into details about what Esther did, but I just want to say in answering to your question that your desire, your burning desire, may be God's action point. Maybe God waking you up to what he wants to do through you. Mm. Wow, thank you so much. Um, there are some questions that popped up that I would, uh, any of, I will throw it up and uh, we'll, uh, any of our panelists uh, can each uh, comment on this. Um, so this one is from Elder Joshua asking that to what point when well, we talked about um, Esther listening to uh, Mordecai, it says, to what point do you receive counsel from people who don't have the same faith as we have, especially when we find ourselves in Esther's situation, uh, receiving instructions from Hagar? Um, so I hope that that was uh, clear. So if uh, presiding Eugene can throw light on that, um, what do you, what would you comment on on this? And then Pastor, you can you you can comment. Oh, uh, thank you, uh, Elder. So I believe uh, Esther was not in a very good position at that time. Um, I mean, as Pastor said, she she has been snatched pretty much from her home uh, into a uh, into a setting that she she has not even prepared for. Um, but one thing that we see is that. Esther, I mean, and, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll answer um, uh, Elder Joshua's question by saying that Esther did not take things that were against her faith, but she was, she was taking instructions on a person that had been placed over her to teach her. 
So the purpose why she was with um, her guy was to be trained, to be trained in the royal setting. And she was taking that advice. So uh, I'll say that as Christians, and before I said this, I, I also said that this story is about how for us Christians, how we act in a non-Christian setting. So Esther has found herself in a setting that, that is not Jewish. So she's still picking the advices that, or the advice that is pertaining to her role, her job in, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in the palace. But when it comes to her faith, she still has Mordecai because we still know that Mordecai was still checking on her. She was still in communication in Mordecai, even when she was in training. So uh, I believe that um, when it comes to, like even in your job setting, you know, you, you have your supervisor when it comes to experience, he's more experienced in the job, he trains you, you take that. But if anything that is going to start against your faith, if anything that is going to take your identity away from, that is where you have to be careful. But when it comes to the environment in which you find yourself, how to, how to uh, grow in that environment or how to enhance or to be, uh, to be developed in that environment, you can you can seek advice from people that are experienced, but you should be careful that it doesn't affect your identity. So as Christians, even in our job places, we always have to keep our identity, but we are able to seek advices from our supervisors. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Pastor, before you throw comments on it, I would just like to add this question to it. Um, so it was still from Elder Joshua asking that, um, uh, Pastor, I think Mordecai warned her not to reveal her identity to anyone in Esther 2.10. Uh, that that may, may have been um, the reason she may have not, uh, she, may, she, may, she may have seen not to have honored Mordecai at the time. Uh, so um, any comments on that? So th that is a good point. So one of the things I, I considered that factor. So all Mordecai said was that don't tell people you're a Jew. But what prevents you from honoring someone who is a Jew? What prevented Esther from inviting Mordecai to eat at her table? What prevent? So all I'm trying to say is that I was that Esther did not have power in herself to promote Mordecai, but Esther had favor before the king. Esther, Esther had the same favor as Haman. So if Haman is advocating for his, his agenda, Esther should have done the same. So all I'm trying to say is that sometimes, sometimes, that is, that is what it takes. And I believe God, stood, God intervened, God honored Mordecai more than Esther could have done. But we should not forget, or we should not appear to be as if we are self-made people. So yes, she kept her, her, her identity hidden, but nothing prevented her from being there for the Jewish people, from being there to support the Jewish people in whatever was happening to them. And I believe that in the approach of Mordecai, it tells us volumes to tell her that, don't, don't, don't think that you and your household will be fine, you. If you don't help, meaning Mordecai had been expecting him had to help. He says, if you don't help, help is going to come from somewhere else, but you will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. So even though she was supposed to hide who she was, Mordecai expected her to help. Help because there is a purpose and a reason why God had elevated her. Mm -hmm. And to your question, that is one of the reasons why a lot of us uh, make some mistakes. God can use any and everybody to speak to us. I've had very good counsel from Muslims and I left them telling my wife, God spoke through this person to me. So we should never be that proud and put our spirituality as, 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 as if you are not this spiritual, you can never advise me. If you don't come to my church, you can never advise me. If you don't speak in tongues, you can never advise me. The pilot who you, you, you boarded the plane, did he speak in tongues? Did he even ask whether he was a Christian or not? The doctor you go and see, you enter the room and say, Doc, I, want a, I have a question to ask you. 
are you a Christian or not? We go and we hear them out. Why? That is their field of expertise. God will bring people. If you don't know how to dress, go to people who know it. But as Chris and Eugene said, it should never conflict your faith. So any advice you're hearing, you're filtering it through your conviction of faith. Mm -hmm. So yes, we should have, even children should be able to speak to us, but we filter it through the barrier and the conviction of our faith. Mm -hmm. Jesus gave us two criteria or two things we must have in the world. He says that mm -hmm. be pure as the dove and be wise as a snake. Those are the only two things. We maintain our purity and we use the wisdom of God to judge whatever people tell us to do. Mm. All right, thank you so much. And uh, at this point, I'm going to yield the platform back to you, Pastor, and, uh, and also uh, Brother Eugene, because um, we talked about um, going to look at Esther's action in the midst of all this. So if you want to highlight those things and how we can continue to um, apply it in our day-to-day lifestyle that we experience. Thank you. We said you you can go first, sir. Uh, uh, yes, please. So, um, uh, so one uh, one weakness, and I'm going to take it from uh, the weakness side of Esther, and I'll uh, I'll bring it to to the strength. So, uh, as Pastor was already laying, I'll just continue from there. That at the beginning, Esther was fearful. I mean, she was fearful. You know, when, 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 when the decree came and she started thinking about herself, even because when she even <laughs> had an encounter with Mother Ka, she was thinking about, I'm going to die. You know, she, she was thinking about herself. So uh, at that time, she was really fearful. And it happens to all of us. You know, it, it happens to the best of us. You know, in the, in the faces of situations, we become fearful. In the faces of situations, we, we start thinking about ourselves. And but one thing that we realized that Esther did not end at that fearful stage when Mordecai told her that be careful because this whole thing that is happening, you know, <laughs> it might be affecting us out there, but you too, you know, it might, it might it will come also into the palace. And, and what we can see is that Esther changed, there was a change in her. Now the fear became boldness. Now she declared that let us go and fast, let us prepare, prepare with me. I'm going to the king. And if I perish, I perish. So now we see a, a young lady who has not been prepared for anything like this. You know, this simple young lady who was snatched from her home and, and, and now going through this whole process. Now she's saying that if I die, I die. Like, and, and one thing I, 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 I came about and knowing that Esther was really bored was Esther would have heard about Basti. He, 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 he knew what happened to her. And I know that story when she entered into the palace, that story, everybody was talking about it. So Esther was already aware of that. Esther knew how terrible this king was, that when this king drinks, things can happen. You know, and Esther also understood the culture that you need the permission of the king, one, to come to the king. And two, if the king makes a decree, that decree is there for life. That decree is set. So Esther knew all this stuff. But she was still so ready to take the, the, the survivor of the nation on her that she was ready to go to the king. So uh, I believe that, and I'm bringing it home uh, to our young ladies, our mothers, our sisters, and even to every Christian out there, that there's going to be a time that we are going to be fearful. It, I mean, yes, we are human beings. That fear is going to come in. But we have the spirit of God in us. And, and as Esther, there's, there's a time that we have to stand and say that, no, fear, yes, I can see the fear. You know, I can see the nervousness. I can, I can see the anxiousness. I, I can see it all. But this has to be done. This is my calling. This is what God has placed me out there for. And I'm going to set a difference. So uh, I believe uh, talking about Esther and uh, Esther and talking about her character, one thing that I learned was that we need to be bold. We need to be bold out there. Young ladies, uh, mothers, fathers, sisters, any Christian out there, we need to be bold out there when we are carrying ourselves. And we should know that when Esther was going, she did it now. Now she has, and, and I know uh, the God factor is going to come in. 
but she she did what she was supposed to do. You know, she fasted, and I and I know uh, when I was doing research after, like, why didn't they talk about prayers? But I know a lot of commentators said that you know in the in that setting when they talk about fasting, it goes with prayers. You know, it goes. It, it's a whole spiritual thing. So that means she prepared herself spiritually, knowing that now this battle is not my battle. I am going out there to fight. I'm going out there to fight for the survival of a nation. You know, now I'm not going out there to fight for my for my uh, marital home. I'm not going out there to fight for my place as a queen. I'm not going out there to fight for my husband. I am going to fight for a whole nation. And she was bold enough to go to the um, um, to the king. And the other thing I also want to touch about was that when she went to the king, she was not just uh, she not she, she didn't just uh, carry herself anyhow. She was really prudent. She 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 used wisdom because she knew who the king was. She knew who the king was. So she used a lot of wisdom. She didn't didn't go and say, "Oh, king, look at what is happening to me. Look at what is happening to my people." No, she she had to set the the the, the environment right. She had to set the uh, the place right for her to be able to affect. The kings for her to be able to 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 bring her appeal to the king. So as we go out there and as we do our things, we have to apply a lot of wisdom. Yes, the opportunity may have, may open up to you. Yes, you might have the opportunity to say whatever you want to say to somebody. But is it the right setting? It, is it the right time? You know. So I believe that when she prepared herself spiritually, God gave her that wisdom that she used when she approached the king. So that is something that I I I I I want to share with us. So thank you, Elder Alote. Thank you. God really bless you for that highlight. Wow, that's an amazing uh, 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 expansion on on the acts of Esther. God really bless you. So to our pastor now. Thank you. Thank you. I, I believe that President Eugene has said it all. I just want to apply it because, truth be told, not all the ladies listening to us will become president, CEOs, but in your home, you are the Esther for your home. And as presiding uh, uh, greatly explained to us, maybe you're having issues with your husband, just like Esther had issue with Haman influencing the husband. Maybe you, you may not be happy with the association, the friendship of your husband, the things your husband is doing. Esther has presented to us a blueprint of how to approach it. Pray, pray. Uh, 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 the king was under different influences and Esther realized that it gets to a point. Your beauty is not enough. It gets to a point. Your eloquence, your screaming. You have, you have fought him for years. There has been no change. Can't you realize that now the approach must change? So Esther knew it starts with prayer. It always starts with prayer because the Bible says it is not by might, it is not by power, but by my spirit. You will achieve more as a woman praying. And secondarily, Presiding said it perfectly. She did not go into a fight mode. She was angry. She was disappointed but her approach was an act of wisdom to hold herself and still have a party with someone who wants to kill her. It is, it is below your, your calling as a daughter of God to fight publicly. It is below your calling and your nature as a child of God to be engaging in insult back and forth with people. We have too much grace and power to fight like that. So Esther used wisdom and privacy to deal with issues that was bordering on, on, on life and death. And I want to encourage all of us, may God give us the wisdom for every situation that we are in. Because I believe sometimes, I, I think one pastor said it, that the problem of this world is the wisdom problem. It's always God, the wisdom of God to deal with the issue. And once God gives us the grace, but Esther is an example for every woman. If you want to be the queen of your home, 
if you want to live in harmony with your husband, it is not screaming. It is not name calling. It is not castigating. It is not instigating him. It is not trying to shame him. Esther could have gone to the king. You want to kill me? Or go to Herman's home. You wicked man. You want to kill my people? No, 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 no. She said, no, I'll carry myself with grace. And I want to encourage you. May God give you the grace so that you can sit at the table with people who don't like you and still keep your composure, keep your, keep your, your calling, your harmony, and your dignity as a queen of God. But God bless you, preside and, and, and great, great, great uh, submission. Thank you, Pastor, for that. And uh, presiding Eugene, our audience, uh, Wendy, or uh, hey, X, E N D Y. I can't even pronounce that. I that's believe that, that's that's your that's your wife supports it. So that's Sandy. That's Sandy. Oh, that's it. <laughs> hey, okay. <laughs> we thank God. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
were also going to be affected. Like they were also going to be affected. So pretty much is the wiping away of the whole uh, uh, Jewish uh, uh, culture or the Jewish nation. So, and we know that Jesus is supposed to come through, through this same lineage. So it, it, is, it is bigger. This whole thing is bigger than just Esther. Uh, it is God's plan was already in motion. So I believe that, and, as, and I, I know we, uh, we, I may be inferring here right now, but one thing that I know that if Esther had not done the thing that she should have done, she would have missed her purpose. Mm. She would have missed her calling, but that will not change the, that will not change God's purpose because God's purpose of redemption had to happen. Jesus had to come, had to come to the lineage of David. It had to happen. So if God, the, the, the nation of Israel will not be wiped away. But Esther's role in saving, saving through her, uh, I mean, being uh, availing herself mm. to be used for God's purpose, she would have lost it. Mm. She would have lost it. And, and I'm here to tell anybody out there that, I mean, yes, uh, uh, we might be small in our own eyes and you might think that, oh, uh, I mean, uh, why, why me or why not me or what? But, you know, God's purpose will definitely be achieved with or without you. God's purpose will be achieved. So God's purpose could have been achieved through another way. But you, your role in this world, your, 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 your part in history it's going to be gone. So you will miss your purpose. You will miss the, your higher calling. You will miss why you are here on earth. And I mean, so as, as we are having this discussion, we should, we should think about what is God trying to achieve through me? What is God trying to achieve through me? Wherever I find myself as a young lady, uh, as a mother, as a sister, uh, wherever you are as a Christian, your question now should be, what is God trying to achieve with me, even in my workplace? Because even if I'm not doing it, God is going to find a way around it. But what about me? I am going to miss my purpose. I'm going to miss my calling. So uh, uh, um, to, to, to just summarize everything, I believe that Esther would have missed this bigger calling that we are now here talking about because God's purpose would definitely be achieved. Amen. Thank you so much for that submission. And to our dear pastor, please. So great point. And, and I... I totally agree to what uh, presiding Eugene just says. And I believe that if there is anything that should scare any one of us, it's missing these moments that God has in mind and has purpose for us. But to the, I know we, we're now juggling situation. Thank God she responded. But remember, Mordecai has started fasting already. Esther did not call the fast first. Mordecai, in his personal capacity, was fasting already. And when, when you go to Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30, I just looked for that verse. It says that, and I sought for a man among them that should make up the head and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. So many times when God is about to deliver a people, he brings people who now wake up to stand. And Mordecai was already playing that role. So Mordecai was trying to alert Esther that, listen, I now see the linkage. I thought you were just caught up. You became a queen. But now I see it. It was for this moment. So Mordecai had already been interceding and praying. And just realize that, no, 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 no. God had already gone ahead of us with plans to save us. And it's you, Esther. But remember, if you don't, if you don't, salvation, deliverance will come. Because a man was standing in the gap for the people. So as Prisani said perfectly, should have missed her purpose and calling. And many times, our purpose may not be like Esther for a nation. It may be for one soul. It may be for one church. It may be for one person. It may be for that first child of yours. It may be for the job that you are in right now. I pray like Esther, we will wake up and realize that I am here for a purpose, higher than myself, higher than my comfort. And when God demands of us to stand in the gap, you will stand in the gap. How would deliverance come? There, God also showed us in this same story that he was going to deliver the people. The same day, Esther decided to make a move. What happened? The king could not sleep. 
requested for the chronicles to be brought. And they read to him that one day a man called Mordecai at the gate reported traitors who were planning to kill the king. And the king asked the question, what was done for that man? And they said nothing. He says, it can't be. Hmm. So at that same time, Mordecai was being honored, being elevated. And you think Mordecai would not have pleaded for the people before the king if Esther had been quiet? So the danger is that if we fail to act, God will raise others. You mm -hmm. will raise others to do it, but we will miss our calling. We will miss our time. We will miss our chance. And Paul, Paul, the Apostle Paul in scripture, says that a dispensation of the gospel has been entrusted to me. If I fail to do it, woe is me. Mm -hmm. Woe is me. Paul realized that, hey, let me, let, let me ask a simple question. Assuming Paul did not write the books he wrote, where would Christianity be? Hmm. Truth be told, the way we do church, the way we govern church is because of what God told Paul and what Paul wrote. Yeah. How we do communion, how we ordain people, how we call people deacons, how we call people elders, how we talk about the resurrection, how we talk about grace and the law, it's because God used him. What if he had been quiet? That's why he says, woe is me. Woe is me. So I pray we will, we will not lose sight of this. And that is why anything our hands find to do, let's do it with diligence. Let's do it with diligence. That assembly that you're about to start may save one soul who will become a great apostle in this church. And all that God did, your whole purpose, was to start that assembly so that God can save that individual and bring that person to fulfill the greater calling he has put on that person. If you don't, maybe the person will be saved on the street through a lot of struggles. We'll still find that purpose, but you have missed out. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage all of us, may we not be like Esther in the beginning. Mm -hmm. There is no risk too small to save a soul. There is no risk too small to stand in the gap for a people that God intends to save. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor, for that. And so to this, I'll, as, as we are bringing this to an end, uh, I'll yield the platform to our dear presiding to submit any last uh, points or anything that stands out and your closing remark. Thank you. Uh, so thank you, Adalite. So um, one thing that I really, uh, I just want to share with everybody here is that God, uses every kind of person. God can use anybody. Mordecai and Esther, they, I mean, they did not appear to be like Daniel or uh, or even like Ezra or Nehemiah. Like, they, they, they did not appear to be that religious or that, like, you know, in terms of, you know, how like they call, oh, this person is so super spiritual and this person is, you know, on that whole different level. They were just simple Jewish. They were just simple people. They were, but who knew who they were? You know, they knew who they were. They were just simple people, but they knew who they were. And 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 even uh, in in the environment that they may have found they themselves, that was a little bit difficult because they were far from home. They still kept that identity. So the only thing I'm, I want to put out there, and this is going to be my last thing, that God is able to use us. God is able. Don't sit somewhere and say, "Oh, excuse me." Don't sit somewhere and say, "Oh." Uh, um, for me, I just joined the church. I'm, I'm just maybe one year or two years into the church, or I just became born again, or I just became this and that. God is able to use you wherever you find yourself. Like Esther, God is able to use you. Like Mordecai, God is able to use us. So as we go around, around, just know that God is able to use you, even in your simplest form. Thank you so much. Thank you, presiding. Thank you for that submission. And to our dear pastor, please. So I have, I have three things to, to end with. The first thing I want to say is that for all the our dear Christian godly women who will ever rise to position of authority, carry yourself with grace. You don't have to be a harsh woman to be a good leader. You don't have to be brash, confrontational to be to show your power. 
Carry yourself like Esther with grace. Carry yourself with grace. When God elevates you, when God brings promotion your way, when you become a leader in the church, when you become a leader at your workplace, don't be harsh. Don't, don't, don't be condescending with the way you talk to people. It is not of God. Because there is this worldly mindset that some women have bought in, that when they get power, when they get authority, then they are, the way they talk, the way they, they look down on people. But I want to tell you, don't forget your identity. You are a godly woman. Christ lives in you. In power, you still carry yourself with grace. In power, you still talk with grace. You don't change the way you talk because you are now a leader of a group in the church. You still carry yourself with grace. Number two, it's in line with what uh, uh, Presiding Eugene said. God's purpose. God's purpose. That don't belittle what you, your contributions are. Don't belittle who you are helping today. Don't ignore the needy people among us today. They may become the queen one day. Uh, that is why only Mordecai could talk to Esther the way he did. No one else. Because sometimes we neglect and ignore people with potential. So when they get into their promised land, you can never relate with them. I want to speak to all of us. The young ladies with potential, may we not neglect them. May we not ignore them. Because God has a higher purpose for them. And the last uh, point I want to say, I said it earlier. May we not forget the people God has used to be a blessing to us. God will always bring people your way. And may we, those of us learning, growing, may we have the heart that is humble to be groomed, the heart that is humble, not to run away by to do our own thing, the heart that can be corrected. Because Esther was the queen, and Mordecai is now instructing the queen. May you have that heart. That when you are elevated, your, the people that groom you can still correct you. They can still tell you what you did is wrong or change this and you hear them in humility. May elevation, may promotion, may having a title in the church never change your heart, mm -hmm. change your attitude towards the hands that raised you, the hands that prayed for you, the hands that fed you because mm -hmm. That will bring dishonor to your own self. May God give us all the grace as we walk with him, not to miss our moment of purpose, because God has brought us all into this for a purpose. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much uh, to our dear brother Eugene, uh, the presiding for the Central COP Assembly in Hawaii. And also to our dear pastor, we say that God richly bless you all for the submission. And to our audience, I would like to recognize our dear mama, uh, Benedicta Brokema Ejay, uh, for, for being a faithful viewer. And she said, I will always carry myself with grace. And our dear sister Sandra saying that she also carry herself with grace. And we say, God richly bless you. Sister Sandra Wusu, we recognize you. Sister Millie, uh, we say that anytime our hands find to do anything our hands find doing, let's do it with diligence. Do it with diligence. Uh, so God richly bless you all. And with, with this submission, um, we know that God is always uh, uh, close to us. God is always ready to come to our aid. Um, but if you don't know, who, if you're listening to us and you don't know who this God is, uh, we want to submit uh, him to you. And uh, this will be led by a dear pastor um, that you will come to know him. And by this, uh, you know that you are safe in his hands. Amen. Amen. It is only God who can make a slave girl into a queen. It is only God who promotes. It is only God who honors. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're listening to us and you want to reconnect you want to give your life to jesus you want to say that jesus i want to trust in you i want to walk with you if you want to take that decision i'm happy and, and privileged to pray with you can you say with me lord jesus come into my heart today forgive me my sins and make me your own i surrender my life to you and from today i will live for you 
Amen. 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 Thank you all so much. We will till we meet next Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on the COP radio station. Once again, we also have our YouTube channel, the Pulpit Media. Please subscribe. Subscribe. This will be uploaded and you can share with your loved ones uh, anywhere in the world. God richly bless you all. Bye-bye.